In this example, slightly different variation on the theme, uh, I'm going back here now to giving you what the arithmetic series is. It's minus 28, minus 24, minus 20, minus 16, minus dot, 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 dot. Um, and it's asking us the sum of how many terms gives an answer of naught. In other words, because you are going to be adding up these initially when you add them up, they're obviously going to get more and more negative. But because you can see they are rising by four each time, there's going to be a certain point in time where the numbers that you're adding actually start becoming positive because you're still adding four each time. And as soon as you start getting them to be positive, when you add up the negatives to the positives, they start cancelling each other out. There will be a certain number of terms whereby the value of the positives is going to be exactly the same as the value of the negatives. And so the two cancel out exactly, giving an answer of zero. And that's what this question is asking. The sum of how many terms. So how many terms do you have to add together such that the negatives are going to counteract the positives and give an answer of zero. That's what this question is asking. OK, well if you look at this, because I know what the series is, we know that A is negative 28. I also know the common difference. Now be careful, even though these are negative numbers, it's actually increasing by 4 each time. So the common difference is positive 4. So I know those two actual uh, values, A and D, minus 28 and positive 4. Now I'm talking about the sum of, so obviously we need to be quoting the sum of formula, S n equals n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 d's. So sum of, there's the sum of formula. Now, I do know the value of A, I do know the value of D, no problem. Do I know how many terms no, I don't. So I do not know the value of n. n is what I do not know. But I do know, um, as well as a and d, that the sum of all these terms, when I add them up, gives an answer of naught. So the sum of n terms, I do know. It's zero. I know it. So I can replace sn with zero. Equals... Do I know how many terms this is? That gives an answer of zero. No, I don't. So n over 2. Bracket. Two a's. Well, 2 lots of minus 28 is minus 56. Plus, I don't know n, so n minus 1. Do I know d? Yes, I do. It's 4, so we put a 4 there. So you get this coming out, as you can see. Well, I'd get rid of this 2 here by doubling both sides. So if you double a nothing, that's still nothing. So that makes that a bit easier. So you get n. So you get minus 56, expand that out, you get plus 4n minus 4, like so. So we get nothing equals n, bracket, minus 56, minus 4 is minus 60, so you get 4n minus 60, like so. Well, as you can see here, what we're getting is a quadratic expression coming out. If I was to expand this out, I'd get n squared. Okay, so there's going to be two answers. Now, I'm not going to expand it out because it's already factorised. There's already a common factor of n, if you like, so I'm not going to multiply it out. I'm just going to say there's going to be two answers. Either n is equal to naught, that's the first term, or... 4n minus 60 equals 0, in which case 4n equals 60, in which case n equals 15. Well, if you think about it, if this is the series, if we don't have any terms at all, we don't have a series. So this answer can be ignored. It's a silly or theoretical answer. You can't have the series if n is nothing. The, the series doesn't exist. So the answer to the question is, when you add up 15 terms of this series, the negatives and the positives will cancel each other out, giving a sum of 0. So the answer to the question is 15. So therefore, S15 equals 0. And there you go. There's the answer to that question. Okay, that's the end of this video.